Hey everybody, this is Will, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the top five MIDI controllers for live performance in 2022. Now, you may be watching this as a guitar player or drummer, uh, or playback tech that's sitting side of stage running tracks. But I want to share what I think are the top five kind of general MIDI controllers, no matter what position, no matter what part you're playing in the performance of live music. And some future videos, uh, we'll be talking about specific MIDI controllers for specific players. So let's dive in and let's get started. First, at the top of the list is what I think is one of the best MIDI foot controllers you can get. It's simple, it's really easy to use, and that's the Looptimus Foot Controller by Loop Community. Now this style controller, I uh, gotta get a shout out uh, to the, the OG for this. Uh, it comes from the Ability uh, MIDI controller made by Baron Yoon. Uh, this was a uh, just rock solid MIDI controller. I mean, it looked like a tank, it was massive, but it was just dead simple to use and had an LCD screen. Um, one of my all time favorite MIDI controllers, in fact, I have the same MIDI controller, this white one here, the Disaster Area Designs DMC60. Um, you can use this to control guitar pedals. This, this person's talking about using it to control Strymon or even Tide pedals, but uh, I use it to control Ableton. It's really simple, really easy. And again, kind of same footprint as uh, the ability. Well, the best controller, if you want something similar to that, that's available now is the Looptimus by Loop Community. Um, they've been making uh, these pedals for quite a while. They're super big in the worship community, but uh, you don't have to be a worship leader to use these. So they're great if you need something simple uh, to trigger tracks in live 20 banks. Um, you know, the deal, super simple. They also released a newer version, which I personally would not go this direction. Looptimus plus that is wireless. Uh, I just don't trust wireless things on stage. Just Bluetooth. It's not wireless over your Wi-Fi, So it's, it's definitely going to be more stable, uh, than using a wireless, uh, Wi-Fi solution. But anyway, uh, the Looptimus plus, uh, cool solution. I, personally though, my vote is going to go for the Looptimus foot controller from Loop Community, which is great. And obviously, if you're a guitar player, that's a great solution. Uh, watch for that specific guitar player solution because I'll share a few other foot controllers that I think are great as well. Next up is the only controller I'm including in this list that has keys uh, to play keyboard on, right? To play piano or pad patches on. That is the launch key. I'm particularly going to say the 49 by Novation. So they have a few different models, 25, uh, 49, 61. Uh, key solution. Um, I like the 49 because it's it's small enough that it's easy to tote around. But what I love about these controllers is you can kind of scroll through the page and see a lot of it. Um, they have a lot of great pads. They have these great uh, kind of encoder knobs on them. Uh, they're very well built. Novation is known for creating great stuff for uh, quite a long time. Um, and they're super easy to use and integrate with Ableton Live. And so you get these great buttons, again, pads that you could assign for songs to trigger tracks. You get some transport control. Um, <clears throat> if you want to use this, there is a remote script, a remote control script that you can choose and able to live to use it with. Uh, I personally prefer just going into mini map mode and mapping to stuff, but uh, this is a great solution. Again, we'll talk about some um, solutions for keyboard players uh, in a specific video, but the launch key 49 by uh, Novation is a really great solution if you're looking for a MIDI controller with keys that you can really tie and integrate into Ableton Live. Next is a MIDI controller from one of my favorite companies. This is the Personas Atom. This is a great controller. It's a grid-based controller. We'll be doing a shootout of, of particular grid-based controllers in the future. Uh, but it's got different banks. I think it's got 16 banks, 50, uh, 20 banks. I'm not sure off the uh, top of my head. Uh, but this is the controller that I use for a while. Um, and I really, really like it. It's bus powered, which is great. Um, the, the, the pads are, are great feeling. So if you're a finger drummer, if you're a beat maker, um, then it works really well in the studio, but it also works really well on the stage. It's bus powered. So you don't have to uh, lug a bunch of stuff around because it's got different banks. Um, it's super easy to go in and, you know, program and control a, a massive live set of songs. If you had that, uh, really easily. And then you have your transport control over here to the right, which again is super great. They have a remote control script as well, if you want that. So the Atom is one of my favorite controllers. And one of the reasons I love it and have used it for, uh, I don't know, the past two years since they released it, um, <clears throat> I throw it in my backpack and it's always there. It's super small. Um, it's not uh, massive, but it has tons of flexibility. Next, talking about super small, this is super small. This is my top pick in kind of the microcontrollers category. Again, we'll do a, a shoot out of those. This is the Akai LPD-8. I like this because these drum pads um, are a big enough surface 
that I think they work well to trigger things with. Some of these microcontrollers can just get too dang small. And this is a really great solution here, right? So to have these pads, uh, they work really well. We have the rotary encoders that we can turn uh, or the, these controls we can turn. This works really well if you're doing key stuff because you get eight of them that can tie into instrument racks, which obviously now in Live 11, we can have more macros than eight. But um, this is a really great solution, particularly for tracks. I really use play, stop, previous, and next. Those are my four kind of key mapping. So I'm left with four additional pads that I can map to if I need it. Um, but I love this controller because it's less than a hundred bucks. In fact, I think it's about 50 bucks. Um, it's well built. I mean, it's a inexpensive controller, but it's still well built, but it's, it's big enough that uh, again, the pads are, are like the full size kind of pads you would get somewhere. We get eight of them works really, really well. Now, final um, choice here. This is my top number one MIDI controller for one of my favorite companies. This is the Oakboard Mini from Oaktone. Uh, Jeff makes some really, really great products. Um, and he's got three different MIDI controllers. We'll, we'll talk about them in, in future videos and break them down. But I particularly wanted to talk about the Oakboard Mini because um, it's super small. Let's look at this comparison. Um, and it's pretty big if you have very small hands like I do, then it looks big. But you can see uh, in a decent normal person's sized hand, it's, it's quite a small controller. Uh, it's very well built. This is like a metal housing. So it's definitely road tested and mother approved. Um, it's USB connection, which is great. So you can connect that right to your computer. Um, you get four pads that are labeled. They, they could be mapped to whatever, but you get a play, stop, previous, and next. Then we have these two middle buttons here that can be assigned to really anything, anything you want. But again, even though it says play, stop, previous, next, you can make that whatever. But it's like Jeff read my mind when he created this controller because the way I teach people to make mini mappings for live performance is to essentially do play, stop, previous, and next. And so this is the perfect controller for me. If you've got a large set list, you may go, that's not enough for me. But uh, Jeff does have tabs. Taz Lite and Taz Pro, which are great plug-in solutions that you can pair with this and still navigate all your songs and jump around in your set, um, even with just these few buttons. And so I'm a big fan of the Oakboard Mini. I'm a fan of all of Jeff's stuff. I think all of these controllers are great solutions, no matter what position, what role you're playing in a live performance. Um, again, we'll do some future videos where we break these down by category, guitar player, drummer, uh, keyboardist, whatever, playback tech. We'll break these down into different categories, but these are my top five favorite ones, ones I see often, ones I've used that I recommend to folks. Um, if you want to get all of my suggestions for gear, whether it's MIDI controllers, audio interfaces, in-ears, whatever, uh, then head to fromstudiosage.com slash gear. You can download my free gear guide. I've updated it for 2022, uh, and it's got tons of really great stuff. So people ask me all the time, what do you suggest for this? What do you suggest for that? I wanted to save you time and effort. Head to fromcsage.com slash gear, completely free. Download that gear guide. You'll get all my suggestions for gear that, again, that's road tested, uh, that's going to work well, that's simple, right? I don't want stuff that's super complex. I want stuff that's simple, holds up, and works really, really well. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, do me a favor. Hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Give me a thumbs up. Whatever the kids do these days. And we'll see you next Saturday, 10 a.m. Central. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye.